Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Stallman and I'm the Extension Lead for Pennsylvania Sea Grant. While we're all staying safe and social distancing, we still wanted to provide some educational opportunities virtually. So we're starting a multi-part video series all about aquatic invasive species or AIS for short. So what exactly are AIS and why are we so worried about them? The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania defines aquatic invasive species as alien species whose introduction can cause harm to the environment, the economy, or to human or animal health. These are species that are not supposed to be here and they can cause harm. AIS can be mammals, like this nutria. They can be plants, like hydrilla. Fish, like this round goby. Invertebrates, like this zebra mussel and even tiny organisms we can't always see with our eyes, like the pathogen spring viremia of carp. As long as it fits that definition of being introduced and causing harm, it can be an invasive species. So why are some introduced species actually beneficial to us? For example, cows are non-native, but we don't consider them invasive because we farm them for meat and milk. Corn is also a non-native species, it was cultivated from Mexico and we grow it all over for food. The answer is that AIS typically have a set of characteristics that give them a competitive advantage over other species, allowing them to take over. One characteristic is that they're more adaptable, meaning they can survive in many different habitats or conditions, especially disturbed or degraded areas. They're voracious feeders, meaning they eat a lot and they eat a wide variety of things, making it more likely they can find and obtain food to survive. They have high reproductive rates, reproducing multiple times in a season and having a high number of offspring. They grow very rapidly and often reach maturity faster than native species. In some cases, they can appear earlier in the spring, allowing them to take up all the space and nutrients available, leaving nothing left for native plants trying to grow below. And finally, invasive species often have a competitive advantage because they don't have the same kind of predator pressure or diseases they had in their native habitat to keep their numbers in check, allowing them to grow and spread with nothing holding them back. Now that we know a little bit about these species and what makes them so invasive, let's talk about why they're such a problem and how they can impact the environment, the economy, and health. Let's start by looking at an ecosystem. We can envision an ecosystem as a pie of resources. We know the pie is only so big and resources can only be divided in so many ways for each species to compete over. Anytime you add a new species into this delicate system, they compete with native species for the limited resources. So a hypothetical food pie for a hungry Asian carp might look something like this. They can consume almost half their weight in plankton each day, leaving very little for other organisms to access. AIS can also completely transform an ecosystem. Here's an example of a species called the rusty crayfish. It might look like an ordinary crayfish, but it's larger, more aggressive, and loves chewing up aquatic plants. Here's an example of a lake in Wisconsin called Sparkling Lake. Rusty crayfish have decimated the plant population here, taking away valuable habitat for fish. It almost looks like an aquatic desert. During this experiment, rusty crayfish were removed from the selected areas and the habitat was allowed to grow back, giving a before and after of the impact a single species can have. Now this looks like a completely different lake, with healthy plant growth providing breeding habitat and hiding spots for fish to flourish. Another way AIS can impact ecosystems is by directly impacting the native species that they're now sharing that space with. Let's take a closer look. These zebra mussels use sticky fibers called bissel threads to attach onto hard substrates, including other living organisms like this mussel. The colony can become so dense that the native mussel can no longer open its shell to feed and breathe, starving or suffocating it to death. We've talked about how AIS can impact native ecosystems. Now I'm going to give a few examples of how they can impact something we all care about, our wallets. AIS can cause impacts to our economy in many different ways. They can impact tourism and recreation by transforming spaces once used for things like boating, kayaking, and going to the beach, and making them unusable or even dangerous. Who wants to walk along a beach littered in sharp mussel shells? And good luck paddling your way through a lake taken over by water chestnut or hydrilla. 
Impacts to our native fisheries from AIS threaten a $4.5 billion recreational fishing and boating industry in Pennsylvania. Our shoreline businesses and industries are also taking a hit. One five-year economic impact study in the Great Lakes reported $5 billion spent on controlling invasive mussels by industries, businesses, and communities. Finally, let's take a look at some health impacts. Invasive species can carry parasites, diseases, and toxins that can make people and animals sick. For example, golden alga is a tiny, single-celled organism that in certain situations can produce toxins that impact gill-breathing organisms. AIS can also facilitate the transfer of toxins up the food chain, called bioaccumulation. Bioaccumulation can occur when species like zebra mussels accumulate heavy metals and toxins like type E botulism toxin in their bodies. As they get preyed upon by other organisms like this round goby, the toxins become further concentrated and continue to move up the food chain, causing fish or bird kills. So to recap, today we learned what aquatic invasive species are, what makes them invasive, and the kinds of ecological, economic, and health impacts they can have once they're introduced. Next time, we'll learn about where AIS come from, how they move around from place to place, and what you can do to help prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. We hope to see you there. If you'd like to learn more about aquatic invasive species and other important issues in Pennsylvania, visit the Pennsylvania Sea Grant website at seagrant.psu.edu.